three, two, one, go.
That is so true. You know, when you don't feel like you're enough, know that he's enough. You know, millions of churches around the world and thousands of Christians around the world have been praying weekly as part of Unite 714. Will you join me in this week's weekly prayer? You know, the Lord Jesus, you are the anointed one. We are thankful our heavenly Father has given us the Holy Spirit enabled us to boldly proclaim the good news to a world ravaged by anxiety, fear, panic, and loss. We ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on our broken world so that 2020 will, be, will become the year of the Lord's favor. Oh God, we ask you to heal our broken world. Only you can replace the panic with peace, the fear with faith, the grief with grace. Lord, of many of the world's most vulnerable people's groups, this worldwide quarantine has been a time of darkness, fear, and anger. Many are struggling mentally, emotionally, financially. Lord, lift them out of this despair. Deliver them by your great salvation. May you truly discover the internal freedom only found in you. God, we thank you for mitigating the effects of COVID-19 and examining your footprint in the nations of the world. Millions of people are asking for your refuge and protection. We know, we know and hear them, and you are freshly touching our world. With one voice, we boldly come before your throne of grace and prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, eradicate COVID-19 and pour out your Holy Spirit on this earth. And if you will believe that, and be in agreement with me. Will you say amen? Just say amen. Hey, now this is what's going on at the house. Hey, what's up, house family? I'm Brylin, and I'm so glad that you guys are joining us here for Kids Takeover. I'm here with Araya, and we're so glad you could be here with us. Hey, guys, we really want to connect with you. There's a few ways you can click on this video description right now or visit the house website and scroll all the way down and fill out the form or hey guys did you know we have a house app and i encourage you to download it right now or because you can listen to old sermons you can learn more about the house or you can learn more about the house kids within the app there's a spot you can click on if you need help because of COVID 19. hey there's also things we do to help out during the week First, there's Talk Tuesdays. Tuesdays at noon is the time of scripture, study, and prayer. You can find that at the House Facebook page. Also, on Wednesday, there is Rooted at 6 and Rise at 7. You can also find those on the House Facebook page. Wait, one more thing. Right Now Media is where you can find Bible studies, 
shows for kids, and other things to help you with your walk in Christ. And it's free. All you have to do to get your subscription is email us at thehousepv at gmail.com. Hey, what time is it? Hmm. Oh, it's Tides and Offering! <laughs> Seriously guys, thank you for continuing to give. You guys might be wondering, how do I give? Well, here's the easiest way. You can go into the House app and scroll down and press the heart. Or you can mail your, your tithes and offering to this address down below. And here's what's happening at the house. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us for the House Online Experience. You know, if you're just joining our family for the first time, uh, we want you to know that today is a special day. You know, one thing we like to say around here is we are a church of all generations reaching the next generation. See, what that means is we believe that our children and our youth, that they are the leaders of today and not tomorrow. Matter of fact, something that I like to say around here is that uh, we will always honor the past, but we will always embrace the future. Can I get an amen? And see, the men and the women who call the house their home, they support this vision. They give to this vision. And so so what does that mean to be a next generation church? That means that once a year, we allow our rise, our youth uh, to take over an adult service, and we also allow our kids ministry to take over a service. So today, if you're joining us today, is Kid Takeover 2020. And I'm excited about today's service for you guys. We hope you've enjoyed it so far. I'm excited that you get to hear from our children's pastor today. But again, we want you to know that our goal here, parents, is not to replace you, but it is to partner with you. It's to help you, help your kid, your youth, your child to discover, believe, belong, become, and be before they leave your home. We want your kid from the time they are zero, from the time they are born, to the time they graduate, to come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. We want them to know that God has called them to belong to their church. You know, the house, not just your church, parents, but we want your kid to know that this is their church, that this isn't a, a there's not a big Holy Spirit and a small Holy Spirit, come on somebody, that there's one big Holy Spirit and this is their church, this is their identity as much as it is anybody else's. So we want them to know that God wants them to belong to his church and then we want to help your kid discover their gifts, their purpose, their personality, who they are and then we want to go a step further. We want to help give them opportunities to use their gift and talent to make a difference. We call that being the church, not only at the church but in their everyday life. 
life. See, we want your kid to discover that before they leave their home, mom and dad, because we know that 85% of kids today, it says that when they leave your home, they go to college, they don't step foot back into church. Well, we believe that that is a false step. We believe that things are changing, that God is raising a Joshua generation, and we're excited to be part of that again, not to replace you, mom and dad, but to partner with you. So just that's a little bit about who we are, how our kids ministry wants you to know it's not a separate entity of our church. It's part of our church. It's part of the mission of believe, belong, become, and be the church. And here in a second, you're going to hear from our children's pastor, but I just want to uh, answer again some questions that I'm still getting. Hey, when are we going to meet together? I want you to know it's coming so soon. May 31st, we're going to have a drive-in church service. It's going to be off the chain. You're not going to want to miss that. There's going to be some more details coming in the next week. And then I believe as of June 7th, again, that is June 7th, we are going to have and launch our first church service. Again, I just believe by June 1st, we're going to be in phase three of Governor Stitt's plan to reopen Oklahoma. And again, part of loving our neighbor is honoring our government. Can I get an amen? We want to be as safe as we can, but no, we're excited. We're going to be open up church as soon as we can. But know this, we've never closed the church, that our church is bigger than Sunday morning, amen, that we, you guys, I've been so proud of our dream team. You guys have been being the church. You're still serving throughout Garvin County and Paul's Valley. We are still getting phone calls and emails that say, man, thank you for the men and women of the house church. They are stepping up and serving us. So we want you to know that we're going to continue to be the church. Can I get an amen? Well, hey, uh, now I just want to go ahead and introduce to you our children's pastor. Because of your faithfulness in giving to God's church, we were able to hire a full-time children's pastor to accompany an already amazing pastoral staff here at the House Church. But along with our church that has rapidly grown, our children's ministry was just growing so quick, and we knew that there needed to be a full-time focus on our children's ministry to partner with you families. And we knew we just couldn't hire anybody, and we took some time to do this. And, and the person that we were able to hire is one of my very best friends. Again, I have known him over 18 years, you guys, over 18 years that this guy has been my friend. He's one of those people that was part of the process of, of helping me give my life to Jesus, but discipling me, helping me. And listen, I didn't hire this guy for his gifting. He's an amazing communicator of the gospel. I hired him because of his character, because of his integrity, not only do, do I hear him preach God's word, I've watched him live it. I've seen his heart, not only for the love of his, of his heavenly father, the love of his wife and his kids and his family, but the love of God's church and the love of his kids. He has been a children's pastor for two and a half years at H2O Church, and I'm excited today. So I hope you got your Bibles out. I hope you got your notepads out and get ready to take some notes. But would you help join and welcome my friend, our children's pastor of the House Church to the platform, the one and only Mr. Nicholas Pastor Waters. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Nick as he comes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Good morning, House family. Uh, I do want to take a moment and just say what an honor it is to stand before you to be reading, speaking, teaching, and learning with you from God's Word this morning. Again, to Pastors Brandon and Callie uh, for the opportunity to be here. And, and if you don't know, uh, Pastor Callie was leading the children's ministry prior to my wife, Brooke, and I coming on staff. And I'm so thankful that she and the leaders uh, have the heart they do for your children as well. And so know that that's not exclusive to Pastor Brandon, definitely not exclusive to my family. But again, we are here to partner with you in helping lead your children uh, to know Christ, to love him, and to live in obedience to his word. Well, that having been said, as Pastor Brandon said, um, I am married and we do have children. My wife, Brooke, and I live northwest of Stratford, Oklahoma, uh, on a 140-year-old homestead, we actually have two pioneer graves in our front yard. Yes, two bodies are buried on our property in our front yard. Interestingly enough, one of those is a child. Um, and we have three children of our own. We have two sons and a daughter. And we are a blended family. And so I don't want you to think that I stand before you perfect and that my life is smooth. Uh, I will tell you sometimes the most stressful part of our home is me uh, still learning how to co-parent and learning how to have an 11-year-old, a three-and-a-half-year-old, and a newborn. That is our family dynamic. Come on, somebody, pray for me. <laughs> but more importantly, pray for my wife, right? Sometimes I joke that my wife has four children. I'm the fourth. Anyways, 
Listen, a little bit more about us, uh, just as we continue to transition in our kids' takeover today. Uh, eight, or excuse me, house kids, house kids, here's what we do. Here's how we approach ministry. We do have nursery. We have ministries uh, specific to our two- and three-year-olds, our four- and five-year-olds, and then our first through sixth graders. And so you know, we don't just throw all the kids in one classroom. Uh, we do have age-appropriate, specific Christ-centered biblical teaching for the children here at the house. On Sundays and then on Wednesdays, we have what we call Rooted. It's our midweek experience for our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And, and please hear me say this. We could not do what we do without the Holy Spirit. We need the presence of God or what we're doing is in vain, right? The Bible says, lest the Lord build the house, the laborers build in vain. And so what we do is saturated in prayer. It is led by the Holy Spirit. And we have an amazing team of volunteers, our house leaders. Could you just give it up for them real quick? Could you like do some hand praises, some hearts, right? Some high fives in the chat. There is an amazing group of men and women many of them parents who have children in this ministry who give of their time and their prayer on Sundays and Wednesdays, and we could not do what we do without them, right? A lot of times the, the glory, the praise, the attaboy, girl goes to the people with the microphone, but the truth is there's an entire army of people who are praying for your children, loving and welcoming your children, not just on Sundays, Sundays and Wednesdays, but know this too, our prayers are not exclusive to two days a week. My wife and I have committed to praying for this church, this house, your family on a daily basis. And we do that as a family in our home each night. So all that being said, I've given you a glimpse into who we are, a glimpse into the house kids ministry here. We're gonna go ahead and continue into our teaching time today. If you've got a copy of God's word, scratch that. I know you have a copy of God's word. Go ahead and open to Matthew chapter 13. We'll get there in a little bit. I'm gonna be reading from a physical copy of God's word today. Matthew is the first book it is the first of the four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 13. Go ahead and turn there. Again, it'll be just a moment till we read from that, but I want you to go ahead and be ready. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open in prayer, and then we're just gonna keep going. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Father God, thank you that you are God and that we're not. Thank you that you are good even when we're not. Father, that we were once enemies of the cross, but because of Christ and his sacrifice, Romans promises us that through salvation, we are now friends again with the God of heaven. And we're not only friends, Father, that through salvation, through the forgiveness and the shed blood of Christ on the cross of Calvary, we can become family. The Bible says we can become sons and daughters. We can become heirs of the kingdom of heaven. And I thank you that now, no matter how old we are, through faith in Christ, we can be your kids, God. May we remember that today. Those of us who already have a relationship with you, may we be reminded of that today. And for those within the sound of my voice that do not yet have a relationship with Christ, I pray that by the end of our time today, seeds have been planted that will give root and grow into a personal relationship with Christ. God, we thank you for your presence and your anointing in the service this morning. God, may our hearts and our minds be humble and open to receive from your spirit today, we pray. In Christ's name, and everybody said, amen. Everybody said, amen. Listen, I can't hear you. You can tap in the, type it in the chat, all caps. Everybody said, amen, amen, and amen. <clears throat> well, listen, I distinctly remember being uh, a college student at Oklahoma State University. It was my freshman, sophomore year. I was in the College of Business, and then I transferred to the College of Agriculture, uh, became a communications major. And I remember one day being in a classroom building, and I saw a flyer advertising a meeting for the Horticulture Club. Now, keep in mind, I said my major at first was business, then it transferred to communications. And if you're like, Pastor Nick, what's horticulture? It has something to do with plants. We'll just summarize it and simplify it to that. And I remember I saw this sign advertising a meeting for the horticulture club. And I thought, I like flowers. I like dirt. I like grass. Who knows? Maybe I'll learn something new. So I went and the first meeting led to a few more meetings, led to me even contemplating running for office in the horticulture club. And, and I loved it. And, and I vividly remember one day being in the horticulture building on OSU's campus and, and our advisor, Professor Tim, Professor Tim, if 
if in some crazy way you hear this talk, know that I love you and I'm thankful for your counsel and advice during my time in the Horticulture Club. But I vividly remember this day, Professor Tim was having a conversation with me. I don't even specifically remember what it was about, but I remember I made this comment about the soil. And I remember Professor Tim stopped and he turned to me and he said, you said soil and not dirt. Yeah. And then I don't remember the rest of the conversation, but I remember that moment that something clicked for Nick, the difference between soil and dirt. Soil and dirt. Now, there is a saying from yesteryear that goes like this. God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. Look at your neighbor, somebody. Come on, type it in the chat. Come on, repeat after me. Say, God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. Look at somebody, your neighbor. Come on, tell them. Say, God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. Well, today's talk isn't about dirt, but it is about soil. You're taking notes today. Write this down. The title of today's talk is Fertile Soil. Fertile Soil. F-E-R-T-I-L-E. <laughs> Fertile Soil. You have your Bibles open to Matthew chapter 13. Remember, that's in the New Testament. It's the first of the four Gospels. It's the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse three, we're gonna be in Matthew 13 for the entirety of our time today. We're starting in verse three, reading to verse nine. This is Jesus speaking to us. Here we go, here we go. Jesus spoke in the form of parables. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, Jesus said, a farmer went out to plant some seeds, verse four. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly, but because the soil was shallow, all right, because it was shallow, the plants soon wilted. I'm in verse six. The plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Verse seven. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, verse eight, other seeds fell on fertile soil, fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. And Jesus ended with this, this statement in verse 9. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Let me hear you say fertile soil. Come on, let me hear you say fertile soil. Feel free to put that in the chat, fertile soil. Now, this is an honest question. If I could guarantee you, me personally, if I could guarantee you a 30, 60, or even a hundredfold return on an investment, would you be interested? Now, I'm serious. Take a moment and answer this question for yourself. I'm serious. If I could guarantee you a 30, 60, or even a 100% return on your investment, whatever it is, would you be interested? Now, consider this. The stock market, the lottery, even a college education, they cannot guarantee you that kind of a return on investment. Listen to this statistic. The National Association of Evangelicals reports that 63%, that's more than half, 63% of Christians accept Christ Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior between the ages of four and 14. Let me read that one more time. The National Association of Evangelicals reports that 63% of Christians accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior between the ages of four and 14. Now, that reality, you may be familiar with this phrase, that reality is re regularly referred to as the 414 window. Now, whether you're a parent, you're in children's ministry, or just in casual conversation, you've heard some Christian jargon that sounded like the 414 window. Here's what that means. There is a window of opportunity 
Now, it doesn't close, but understand after age 14, it's closing. The likelihood, think about this, think about this. Six out of every 10 children are likely, statistically, probably, going to respond to the gospel between the ages of four and 14. One more time. Six out of every 10 children are likely, statistically, probably going to respond to the gospel between the ages of four and 14. Now, here's what I know. Several of you watching today have little people between the ages of four and 14 in your home. And you may look at them and you may be asking the question, is this little heathen ever gonna get saved? (laughs) Well, there's a really good chance. I'm gonna say, by the way, I am praying for two of my children to be saved, right? I'm praying for the third one that he will stay saved. Come on now. And now that may be a messy statement, but listen, salvation is a one-time experience, but sanctification, there's a word for you. Sanctification is a lifelong process. It's possible that that little person in your life, in your home right now, will be saved. In fact, it's probable that they will be saved between the ages of four and 14. Now back to Matthew 13 and the parable of the sower. You're taking notes. Write this down real quick. Write this down. There are four types of soil in the story, and there are four different responses to the seed. There are four types of soil in the story in Matthew chapter 13, and there are four different responses to the seed. Number one, there was hard soil. Number two, there's shallow soil. Number three, there's crowded soil. And number four, there's fertile soil. Let me hear you say fertile soil. Come on, somebody. Fertile soil. Absolutely. Now, please understand, don't miss this. We know from this passage of Scripture that the soil represents the human soul. Think mind, will, and emotions. The soil in this story, this parable that Jesus is teaching, the soil represents the human soul. And the seed represents the word of God. The seed represents the word of God. Now let's look again at Matthew 13. Let's skip down to verse, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 13. Let's skip down to verse 18. Now listen, by the way, how do we know what I just shared with you? Because Jesus explained to his followers, the disciples, what he was saying. Matthew 13, 18. Now listen to the explanation of the parable, Jesus said, about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and they don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and he snatches away the seed that has been planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. Verse 21. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as the problems, as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Verse 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. And we end in verse 23. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word, and they produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. Now, let me very specifically address a group of you listening and learning this morning. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers, coaches, house kids, leaders, please listen, lean in. You are investing into fertile soil when, when you sow God's word into the heart of a child. Let me say that again. You are investing into fertile soil when you sow God's word into the heart of a child. Now, let's talk about some realities. There are three of them. I'm sure there's several more, but for our time this morning, we're gonna talk about three of them. Again, you're, you're taking notes. Write this down. If you run out of room, feel free to take your neighbor's hand and write it on their palm. Take a picture before they wash, though. You should still be washing your hand during this time, by the way. Hands. Here we go. Let's talk about some realities. Number one, we, Christ followers, Christian, Bible-believing mom and dad, 
Number one, we are not guaranteed. Hear this. We are not guaranteed that the seed will stick the first time it's sown. Did you notice that in the parable? The seed is sown, it doesn't stick. The first time, the second time, the third time, but finally the fourth time. Now, I'm not gonna simplify this and say that it's just gonna take four tries and your child's gonna click. Praise God, hallelujah, I understand. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Mom, dad, I'm ready, let's go right now. Bath, baptize me in the bathtub, right? It may be that quick, it may not. But understand this first reality. We are not guaranteed that the seed, the word, will stick in the soil, the soul of your child, the first time, the second time, the third time they hear, but we keep sowing that seed. We keep sowing. Here's the second reality. The four types of soil, remember we said there are four. Jesus said there are four. The four types of soil not only represent four different people, four different persons, they also represent our own responses to the word of God. Think about that. There was a time in your life, first time, that the word of God was spoken, shared, written, read, and you rejected it. But then there was another time you received it, really didn't do much. A third time you received it, you did a little bit more. And then at some point in your life, you received, and by faith you've responded and you're continuing to respond. And there is a harvest, the, the fruit of the Spirit being shown and grown in your life. Specifically, let's write it down this way. So the four types of soil not only represent four different people, they represent four different responses, our own responses to the word of God. Here's the first one, rejection. That was the first response, honestly. The soil didn't even receive it. It stayed on the surface and the birds came and took it away. It's possible you may be in that season. The soul, the soil of your child may be in this season. You may be like, man, I just don't understand. They don't seem interested in the word of God. Well, they may be in a season of rejecting, but understand you don't have to stay in that season. Keep sowing, right? Here's the second one. Acceptance with no repentance, okay? To repent means to stop what you're doing and to turn away from it. We understand another form of soil received it, right? But because it was so shallow, there was nowhere really for the word to grow and go and, and to respond and, and bear a harvest, right? The soil accepted, yeah, well, yeah, I, I really should consider living for God. But then there was no change. You may be in that season in your home, in your child's life, maybe even in your own life. You accept the reality that there is a God. You accept the reality that there is sin. But there's no change yet. The third type is repentance with no discipleship. You receive it. You're grateful for it. The Bible says Jesus said there was joy, Right? But then life started to happen. The soil was crowded. Could be video games for your kid. Could be summers coming. Could be a summer job, right? Could be a, a dating relationship, depending on how old your child is, right? Could be family drama if you're a blended home. Whatever it is, right? But you may see that like God's word is taken root and, and they're, we're trying to grow and, and your child is repentant. They, they feel bad for their sin and they're trying to live different. But then the world just seems to win, right? What is that? We would call that repentance with no discipleship, the follow through. And then that fourth response, the fruitful soil, we would call that discipleship with multiplied growth. Discipleship. We don't just know about God, we know God. Listen, that is the goal for all of our children. That is the prayer for the children in my home. That is my desire for my own life. Discipleship with multiplied growth. We not only know about God. We know God. We not only read his word, we obey his word. Do you understand? These, this, this isn't just words we're talking about here. It's not just semantics. Like this is literal life change. And when that happens, when it clicks, there's a harvest. It's undeniable. 30, 60, even a hundredfold. So we're talking about three realities We've talked about two. Let's go to the third one. The third reality, you're writing this down. Sowing seed takes work. Sowing seed takes work. Whether we're talking about actual gardening, which I enjoy, or parenting children. Sowing seed takes work. So lest you become discouraged or think you've lost and you're out of the game or there's no hope for your child. Parenting takes work. <laughs> and I dare say, 
that there's no more noble work than the discipleship of a soul of a child. My wife, Brooke, and I, we both treasure this quote. It comes from Andy Stanley. It's attributed to Andy Stanley, and this is what it says. Your greatest contribution to the world may not be something you do, but someone you raise. Let me read that again. Your greatest contribution to the world may not be something you do, but someone you raise. Family, I'm going to tell you right now, I have to remind myself of that daily. With our 11-year-old, <laughs> with our three-and-a-half-year-old, and by faith someday for our five-week-old. One more time. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers, coaches, house kid leaders, listen to this, families, listen it's kind of a wordy statement, so I'm going to repeat it a couple times, and we'll put it on the screen. We best sow the word of God when we show the world that Scripture has lodging in the soil of our own souls. That's a meaty statement. We, Christians, Christ followers, disciples of Jesus, we best sow the word when we show the world that scripture has lodging in the soil of our own souls. I wanna say this again. You are investing into fertile soil when, that's a choice, when you sow the word of God into the souls of children. When. That's a guarantee, by the way. Jesus said so. We read that in Matthew 13 this morning. Now, let me say this before we go any further. It's possible you're listening this morning and you may have had this thought or even said this out loud and hopefully you haven't logged off if you fall within this camp. You may be thinking or have said this, Pastor Nick, I'm not a parent. I don't have children in my home. I'm not even around kids and I'm definitely no kid myself. Those things may be true, but ma'am, sir, I say this with the confidence that comes from Christ. Listen to this. You are fertile soil. You are fertile soil. And you need to know this, that God, this is for everyone, not just parents. God desires a relationship through his son, Jesus Christ, with you. Parents, he, God, desires a relationship with your child. And if you have more than one, he desires a relationship with each of them. Even if right now they reject him or seem disinterested at best in God, he still wants and waits and longs and sent Christ to die for a relationship with him. Grandparents, come on, grandparents. I know, I know we've got several grandparents, a lot of grandparents in this house in this faith family. Grandparents, listen to me. You still have an active role to play in the kingdom of God. Grandparents, the heavenly father has not excused you from the front lines of discipleship as it relates to your children and grandchildren. We need you, grandparents. They need you, grandparents. It's not a hands off, let's just spoil them and send them home. No, listen, roll your sleeves up get dirty. Keep your hands in the soil of your children and grandchildren's souls. Keep sowing the word, grandma, grandpa. We need you. House kids leaders, I want to talk to you for just a moment. House kids leaders, ours is an eternal work. Now you listen to this. House kids leaders, ours is an eternal work. And we are partnering, as Pastor Brandon said at the beginning of this time together, we are partnering with families. We're not replacing families, leaders. We are partnering with families to help lead their children to Christ. We are partnering with families to help lead their children to Christ. There's a guaranteed outcome for that too. We're investing into fertile soil. Fertile soil. And I, I sense that this is an appropriate time for us to, to stop and pray because I believe whether you're a parent, a grandparent, 
It's possible your children are even watching and, and their hearts are ready to respond to the word of God. I believe the Holy Spirit has been working in the hearts and minds of those who are logged on with us this morning. And, and we're gonna pause right now and create space to respond to his prompting. So here's what we're gonna do. Something a little bit different. We're gonna have three different opportunities to pray, three different invitations. I'm just gonna explain those and then we're gonna pray through them together. Number one, we're gonna offer an opportunity for your children to respond. It's possible you may have a child who falls within that 414 window and they've listened to this and it's possible, it's entirely possible God's been working in their heart prior to this moment and they're ready to respond. We're gonna give them an opportunity to pray and ask for God's forgiveness for their sin and to make Christ the King, the Lord of their lives. We're gonna pray for that. And then we're gonna pray for the adults who are with us. This is your time to receive Christ. This is your time. This is your time to begin your own walk of faith with Jesus. And then our third and final prayer is going to be for those families that if we're honest, they've become weary in the work. We're human. Me too. We've asked the question. We may be in a season and even feel bogged down in the dirt. God, does it even matter? Will my child ever respond? Maybe they did respond at one point and they've walked away. They're, they're that prodigal son or daughter. God, will they ever come back? We're gonna pray a prayer of encouragement and recommitment. That'll be our third prayer. So again, we're gonna start with our kids. As best you can, you pull those kiddos in tight. And listen, in all of these prayers, it's not the words that save us. It's the posture. It's the attitude of our hearts before Almighty God. That is what he responds to. The Bible promises us in Romans chapter 10 that if you believe in your heart, your soul, if you believe and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Bible guarantees you will be saved. And I wanna say this too. If at any point you respond to any one of these prayers, either while we're online or afterward, please text us at the house and let us know. We'll put the 405 phone number on the screen. Feel free to reach out to myself. Parents, those of you who are already in the ministry, you have a child who responds today. Please let one of us know, one of our leaders, there are several. Understand this, when you respond, if you respond in these next few moments, don't keep it to yourself. Don't stay silent. Speak out and let someone know. Now, your kiddos are there. They're paying attention. Here's what we're going to do. Pastor Nick is going to say a prayer, and you're going to repeat it after me, kids. It's very simple, and know this. We're talking to Jesus. Kiddos, if you say, Pastor Nick, I, I want Jesus to be the boss of my life. I want him to forgive my sins. We're going to pray a prayer right now, right where you are, okay? So I'm going to ask you. I'm going to keep my eyes open, and it's okay. We're still talking to God. Kiddos, I'm going to ask you to repeat these prayers words after me. Say, dear Jesus. Come on, kids, repeat after me. If this is you, say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Make heaven my home. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Help me live for you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Could you put your hands together now? Come on. I, it's entirely possible a child just prayed that in your living room, in your car, in their bedroom. If that happened, please let us know in the comments below or reach out to one of our staff or a leader within the house kids directly. Please let us know. We want to celebrate that with you. Now, secondly, I'm talking to the adults and, and you say, Pastor Nick, I'm right there. I'm ready. Would you just stop talking so we can pray? Yes, to the adults that are listening, please. Just repeat, again, it's not the words. There's not pixie dust. It's the presence of Almighty God responding to the posture and attitude of your heart. Adults, repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for wanting me. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for receiving me into your family. I give you my life. I ask for new life made available through Christ. From this day forward, I live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together. Adults, if that was you, same thing. Please reach out to our staff. Let us know. You can text that 405 phone number. You can comment below. As someone there in the living room with you, tell them that you responded in this moment to receive the God of heaven as your personal Lord and Savior. And here's the third and final prayer. Families, God help us. Ours is a dirty work, raising these kids but ours is a good work, fertile soil. Your child is fertile soil. God sees you. He knows the tears that you've cried and he hears every prayer that you pray. You lean in, you keep your hands in that soil and you continue to sow the seed that is the word of God and know that what you do is not in vain. This prayer is for you. This prayer is for me that we would be encouraged and that we would keep tending the fertile soil of the souls of the children in your life, in your home, and here at the house church. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pray over you, and I would just ask in this moment that you receive, you just sit in the presence of Almighty God, and I believe he knows the desire and the prayer of your heart. I'm just going to pray over you. I'm going to pray for us right now in this moment, and then we'll turn this back over to Pastor Brandon. Would you pray with me? God of heaven, Lord, thank you that you are with us, that you've been with us. Father, that you are working with us on our behalf. And the Bible promises that when we don't know what to pray, your Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings. And God, for as much as we love our children, you love them even more. The psalmist wrote that children are a reward. They're like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Father, I pray that we not lose our children to the world, but that we prepare them and send them as missionaries into this society and onto continents around the globe. God, help us to not despise the dirty work, working this fertile soil. And more than just bringing them to church and logging online and putting a phone in front of their face, God, help us to actually do the harder thing by living out this faith through our obedience in front of our children every day. God, I pray for that parent who maybe has become lax or lazy in their own discipleship. God, that you would encourage them that what they do matters, even if the world doesn't see it, even if Facebook doesn't respond to it, their children will, when they see the faith of mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, teachers, coaches, we know that children will respond when they see that faith lived out. God, I pray encouragement for the soul of that mother, that single dad, those grandparents raising their grandkids. Holy Spirit, help us, as the Bible says, to take a new grip with tired hands, to recommit to sticking our hands back into that fertile soil and to stay dirty, to stay in it, and to know that there is a guarantee. And by faith, it is our child that you're talking about when you say there will be a harvest of 30, 60, and 100 fold. God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for seeing our hearts and meeting the needs in our homes. Thank you for this house. In Christ's name we pray and everybody said, amen, amen, and amen. Pastor Brandon, come on up here. Family, we love you so much. We love you so much. Man, Pastor, what a great word. Thank hey, you. family, will you just do me a favor? Can we just give it up for Pastor Nick and give him some fist bumps, some love, some praying hands? And also, if you would do me a favor, continue to pray for him and yes. Brooke and their uh, family nation and Lena and their beautiful little girl, Lily, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're, man, we're honored. We're honored at the house church to have him and his family on staff and just continue to cover them. Use Pastor Nick and family as a resource for you yes. parents. He brings a fluid of information of how to help you disciple your kids. And also, I just want you to know if if there's anything that we can do for you guys, uh, 
any one of our staff member, man, just let us know. We love you. We're for you. We're battling with you. We yes. can't wait till we see you again. Also, we just want to remind you, come back next week yes. uh, because our brother, uh, he's on our board of trustee. He heads up our growth track. I like to call him a brother, but also a pastor and a spiritual mentor to us. The one and only Johnny Tyler is going to yes. be bringing the word on Memorial Day weekend, and you're not going to want to miss it. Well, we love you. God bless you guys. Have a blessed day, family. Tonight